in posture therapy, we make the difference between sliding, slouching, and slumping. Well, they are not completely independent from each other, but this time I'd like to discuss the direct causes of slumping and what you can do about it. Welcome, I'm Olivier Girard, ergonomist, posture therapist, author of the Posture Manual, and creator of three online posture programs. Third things first, why is slumping a bad idea? Well, number one, when you slump, you see that your upper body shifts forward and therefore for the lower back muscles, it's like, you know, holding your shopping bags far in front of you when you come back from, from the shopping. So that's super heavy on your lower back. That's reason number one. Reason number two, when I slump, you see that my line of sight goes downwards. Hence, to look at my screen, I will have to create a neck extension like this, which messes up the, the cervical spine and creates a lot of strain in the neck muscles. And another source of neck strain is the third reason why slumping is a bad idea, is as you'll hear with your weight offset and therefore heavy, you'll have always to lean on your forearms, forearms slash elbows slash something, yeah? And as a result, your shoulder blades will have a tendency to move upwards because you're resting your weight on your neck. And your neck, this is posture rule number two for those of you who have read my book or followed the program, the neck is not supposed to be strained. The neck is designed to always stay relaxed. So carrying your weight on your neck is a bad idea. Now, apart from slumping that would be due to sliding and trying to compensate or something, let's discuss the uh, direct causes of slumping. So we imagine that you're sitting well with your feet on the ground and sitting at the back of the chair with your belt supported by the lumbar support, okay? So until here, you're doing well and still you're slumping, why? Possibility number one, is that your keyboard is and mouse is too far forward. I see that very often in HR or finance with people who have a paper in front of them and the, the keyboard therefore far in front. When you have to work with the two, unless the paper is your main tool, i.e. your writing, your diary or something like this, if the keyboard is your main tool, it's got to be where your fingertips are and therefore the paper goes in front possibly on a document holder to make it more readable. Same with the mouse. So this is how to fix the first reason why you slump. Second reason why you slump, well, you don't take enough breaks, you know. Everybody, including myself, will after a while get tired and go like this, yeah? It's muscle tiredness, it's visual tiredness, is everything you want, but tiredness will always bring you in this direction, never in the other direction. Because even if it brings you to that, you see that it's a rounding movement of your spine. So it's not rounding forward, it's rounding like this, but it's always rounding. Then third reason why you slump is that you haven't uh, checked your visual acuity recently enough and you tend to move closer to uh, the screen. The closer you go, the bigger the weight on the lower back and the bigger the need to compensate by resting on your forearms. And the fourth, maybe last reason or last important reason why you slump is that your mid-back extensors don't manage to carry your weight over time, i.e. they're weak or not endured. And for that, I will show you a strengthening exercise, which is safe and at the same time super useful. The good thing is that you can do it at the office. It's the equivalent of the one that I've called the prayer, which you do on all fours, but it's on your chair, which makes it much more suitable to many daily life situations. So let's go like this. You're gonna sit like an old man or like an old woman, and step number one will be to palpate in your lower spine, see that, feel that you know the vertebrae are popping out. So step one is you flatten your lower back, you make the, the, the vertebrae just disappear. Step two is you don't let your head, head sorry, hang forward like this. You bring it back. So this is what I call the chin tuck skill, okay? It's bringing back to the middle, not further back than its normal position. Just the middle. 
Step three is this is stable, that is also stable. I'm going to push my mid back just slightly forward. Maybe you don't even see anything on the cam, it's around one millimeter or so, but I start feeling that the mid back muscles wake up. And number four, I'm going to exert an effort of my forearms against my thighs. Yeah, so that's a backwards effort. And this is going to increase the tension that I feel in the mid back. And I'm going to keep this tension for around 40 seconds at least. The reason why the 40 seconds is that it will force you to breathe, number one. So you have to be able to hold your mid back while still having your, your, your lungs that expand and, 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 and retract. That's number one. And reason number two is that we're talking about muscles that need to be endurance. So, you know, if I want them to be endurant, I should not train them in, in short reps. I have to train them uh, over time like this. Okay, so you know why slumping is not a great idea. You know four reasons why you slump, which you have to check out before investigating the rest. And with that, you're well off. If you need some more structure around the posture correction efforts that you want to undertake, well, you can consider the online posture programs. Everything that I know is on the YouTube, but by getting the program, you get the structure around it, which makes it much easier to, to, to follow, to stick to, and to, uh, to master.